Hi, my name's Kath and I work at Wolverhampton Art Gallery as a technical officer. I'm going to talk to you today about uh, hanging pictures and choice of frame and various things that go along with that. First of all, I'm going to start with choices of frame. If you were going to have a picture framed, you probably want to go to a shop, a specialist framing shop, so that they can give you advice and probably do the framing itself. So I'm just going to go through a couple of different kinds of frame to show you the different options. So the first one we have is quite a nice simple wooden frame. It's quite basic, a simple style wooden and just a neutral colour. And it's made up glass in the front, then the picture and then the backboard, very basic. This again is a very simple frame which is wooden, it has been painted black with a black wash so you could do whatever colour you wanted to match your room. Again, just with a backboard, there's no glazing in this one. This is a much more traditional style, uh, Victorian type period, which is very heavy, it's made of wood and plaster and then we'll have the gilding on as well. Very substantial frame even though it's for such a small picture. Very, very basic uh, clip-in frame. And this can stand up as well as go on the wall. And then this, which is just a small section of a, a much larger picture, is a print on aluminium. So it's a paper finish, there's no frame at all. This is quite a modern way of mounting pictures. So once you've chosen your frame, the other two things that you can consider are glazing and the mount. The mount is um, a card mount for works on paper and you usually have the option of a window mount or a float mount. If it's an oil painting then you're uh, traditionally going to be using a slip which is the equivalent of a window mount but uh, made out of very thin framing material or you can cheat and use this gold uh, conservation card and just cut very thin pieces and use that instead of wooden slip. If you're choosing something for work on paper you have very neutral acid free no bleach, no dye, conservation card. Or you can choose mount card, which has any number of colours, which you might use to complement um, the picture or be neutral so that the picture stands out. Another consideration is if you have a picture with a, a particular point of focus that's lost in a very busy picture, you can use the colour of the mount to draw, that, draw the attention to that particular focus. So margins for the mount card, the side margins traditionally are going to be the same, so the picture will be centered. The top and bottom, traditionally the bottom would be deeper than the top. So if you work out equal margins and then take five millimeters from the top and add it to the bottom, the reason for that is perspective. Um, I don't know if you know, but Door hinges are also done in the same way where they're usually six inches from the top of the door and nine from the bottom and that is because you're looking down on it. So it gives the impression that they are the same and that's the same for top and bottom margins. A window mount really is just a window cut out and the picture is mounted behind. A float mount is where the picture is mounted on top. So next, uh, just going to very briefly go through glazing. This is the bit of glass on the front of the picture, which you would generally put in front of a watercolour or work on paper, but probably not in front of an oil painting. And you have two choices, glass or acrylic. And then within that, you have another two choices, reflective or non-reflective. So if we go straight to acrylic, I've got a piece here. This is really quite thin and it comes with a protective film on both sides and if you look closely you can see here that there is a kind of frosting and that is the non-reflective part and that goes against the picture and then stops the, the lights from the room um, casting any reflections. 
otherwise you can just go for the other end of the scale which is plain glass it is generally advisable to use gloves when handling it because the edges are not polished so it can be very very sharp and if you ever have an accident with a picture that's glazed for example this one if you uh, had it standing on the wall or something and it fell like that and you heard the glass break the best thing to do is leave it exactly where it is undo the back clips, remove everything layer by layer very carefully so you've got the picture out and then you can clear up the glass safely. If you pick it up, which instinct kind of says that you want to do, it's possible that the broken glass then can scratch the face of the picture and if that's something that's expensive or sentimental value to you, you really don't want to do that. Four main types of hanging style are single hang, double hang, a Victorian salon hang and what we call a poster wall. The Victorian salon you may have seen if you've been to um, something like a National Trust house of that period and it is quite literally floor to ceiling, side to side of a wall just covered in pictures. There's no rhyme or reason to it, they threw up as many as possible. So the poster wall style is a modern version of the Victorian salon and it is quite a lot of pictures all on the wall, can be floor to ceiling, side to side, but they're much more regimented so grid lines, everything is placed quite deliberately but to look random. A single hang is a single row of pictures around a room using a common centre line the height that we choose to use here is 142 centimetres from the floor to the centre of the picture, which is 56 inches. This is simply because we have noticed that it's a good compromise between two people and children, and a double hang is similar to that, where one picture may be above another if they're of the same series or related in some way, or you simply don't have enough room to put them all out in one single line. Okay, so we're just going to talk about different kinds of fittings for your picture. First thing most common is brass plates, mirror plates. These are fully brass, you can buy steel coated in brass, I think they're probably a little bit cheaper, but these aren't very expensive anyway. First thing you need to do is decide where you're going to put the mirror plates. We put them on the sides, but I have seen them top and bottom. It's your choice, but I prefer the sides because it's easier for hanging and getting it level. We put them in the centre, so you just need to mark out where the centre of the picture is. Take your mirror plate, place the centre of the mirror plate where the centre line is and just mark the holes and then you're going to drill those holes and screw that in. This is simply another size to demonstrate, so if you were having um, a much bigger picture you will want to use a much bigger mirror plate and there are smaller sizes as well. We just use normal wood screws to attach the mirror plate to the back of the frame but when you come to put it on the wall you might choose to use a brass screw to keep it in keeping with the theme if you want to keep the mirror plate showing. What we do here is use again a normal steel screw but then we cover the mirror plate and screw head in masking tape and paint it the same colour as the wall. So hopefully the fittings don't detract from the view of the picture and the experience of the person looking at the picture. Another type of fitting is what we call security clips, where you have the clip that goes on the back of the frame and a pushing clip, which stops it being able to be removed from the, the wall without a special tool. So we've got our frame here. We've already marked out the centre as we did with the mirror plate and we're just going to attach that with two small screws. So you want to be careful when you choose your screws because you don't want it so long that it's going to push out the front of the frame. So the clips are in place. If you don't quite understand how this works, don't worry, most people don't. We've got a dome headed screw that sits in the wall and then 
the clip sits over it. This second piece of the clip pushes it in and now you can't actually remove the picture from the wall. So that's why they're called security clips. So if you have had your picture recently framed by a framers, it might come back to you like this with the two eyes and some string or some brass wire. This isn't something that we generally would use here because it's quite difficult to get level and it's very, very unsecure. So it's very easy for someone to help themselves, especially to a small painting like this. However, it's very common in a domestic situation. Um, the idea is generally that people would just put a, a nail or a screw in the wall or a hook if you can, and then that just hangs on the string. So a couple of words about that. If you have your string or wire as tight as possible, it means that the picture is not going to lean out from the wall quite so much. And if you want to keep it quite level, it's best to put two hooks um, in the wall so that you're hanging from two points. It just stops it wobbling quite so much. Suspension rods are usually used for older pictures in a more traditional setting, such as a Victorian room using a picture rail. They are long rods that hang from the picture rail and slide down behind the picture using a couple of brackets. Another method that you can use is split battens, which is quite simple. And this is for anything that might be mounted on board and doesn't have a frame or the aluminium mounted. So you have a split batten on the back of the picture and then you have another button that goes on the wall and the two fit together like so. Again, it's not entirely secure because people can just lift it off the wall, but you can uh, level it really easily using this method. And yet another method, this picture has previously been hung using Velcro, which is an interesting idea. Not one that we would use here for several reasons. It's going to be pretty hard to level it. It's very definitely not secure. And this is a picture. It's got a fair amount of weight to it. It's glazed. I don't think Velcro is very safe. It's not going to last very long. And you really don't want that picture to fall on the floor. Just a quick word on light levels. If you're taking this from a conservation point of view, your works on paper really want to be left at a maximum of 50 lux and your oils on canvas or board really don't want to be more than 200 lux. Just to give that a bit of context, the room that we're in at the moment is about 410 lux, so far too bright for anything here. From a domestic point of view, what you don't want is to put your picture in front of direct sunlight so preferably not opposite any windows. If you really do need to put it opposite a window because that's the only space there is, then you can buy UV film that you can cover the glass with. Um, light bulbs will actually give off UV light as well. Some you can get that have that blocked or you can use LED lights because LEDs don't really give off UV um, and you can get those incorporated into a picture light. Temperature and humidity are going to be quite difficult to control in a domestic situation, but very important in a conservation point of view. Temperature we like to keep here at Wolverhampton is about 19 degrees Celsius, and the relative humidity is about 50%. That's how much water the air can hold any one time. In a domestic situation, that's going to be a lot harder, but bear in mind that works on paper absorb water really, really easily. So you don't particularly want to put them in a steamy room like a kitchen or a bathroom and above a radiator is also a bad place to put it. So now we're going to have a look at ways of levelling when you're putting your picture up. As I mentioned before, we usually use a height to the centre of the picture of 142 centimetres. So I'm just going to mark that on the wall, but on a piece of masking tape because I don't really want the wall covered in bits of pencil. What we use here at Wolverhampton is a laser level, which makes hanging an entire wall a lot quicker. 
than using a spirit level. So we can have the whole wall marked out. You do have to be careful that no one walks past it because it does pick up vibrations from the floor. You guys probably aren't going to have this kind of equipment. You're probably going to be more familiar with this. We've got this mark here and we want at least two if not more. So I need to put the sticky tape down first. We want the bubble to be exactly in the middle of that window and we'll just do the two lines. So now we can put the picture on that centre line. With regards to position sideways it really depends on your space. If you want it to be the centre piece of an alcove or a particular size wall then you're going to need to measure in equal distance and put it up there. If it's just to fill in a space that you've got on your wall in between your television and your bookcase or whatever, then it's going to be to your aesthetic um, measurement really. Just a final word on security. What you don't want is to put your beautifully framed artwork up in your hallway at home, invite some guests around to look at it and have them brush past with their coat and scratch the, the face of it. So just have a think about accidental damage. Make sure it's secure on the wall and it's not going to get easily knocked off. If you're in a gallery situation, you might want to think about a physical barrier if something's very precious and you want to keep people away from it. If you don't want a physical barrier, you can indicate something by just putting a bit of contrasting tape on the floor and um, most times people will see that and subconsciously stand behind it. Insurance is another th thing to think about. Just make sure that it is appropriately insured for the correct value. It might not be included under a general insurance policy. Well, that was just a brief summary on how to hang your artwork. Um, I hope you find it useful.